In this clip, astronomer David Kipping explains the biggest issue with UAP sightings. Check it out. When you hear about the stories of UAP or UFO encounters, the ones that intrigue me the most are the ones that are military pilots, the people that know the difference between a flock of birds and weird anomalies. When you, are you aware of the Tic Tac yeah. incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you hear about things like that, and you, uh, in my mind, there's a couple possibilities. One, super advanced, blacklisted military, some sort of a propulsion system that they've been working on for decades, completely in secrecy, and they're testing them off of areas where you have a lot of military activity, mm -hmm. which is where these things do take place. Yeah. One of them was San Diego. That's the Nimitz. In November 2004, the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group encountered a Tic Tac UAP off Southern California, exhibiting extraordinary speed, agility, and no visible propulsion. And the other one, the Ryan Graves footage, the stuff that they get, that's on the East Coast. Mm. In 2014, Navy pilot Ryan Graves encountered UAPs off Virginia Beach, displaying advanced maneuvers, no visible propulsion, and frequent sightings, prompting safety concerns and investigations. But it's all in areas where they already do military training exercises with fighter jets. So it would make sense that that's where you, if this was the United States government doing that stuff, they would do that. But when you get back to like 2004, and you're talking about something that can go from 50,000 feet above sea level to sea level in w less than a second. Like, I yeah. think it's seven-eighths of a second it went. You have uh, visual confirmation. You have radar. You have video of it. You have two different jets that see this thing. They, no one understands what it is. It flies directly to their cat point where their meetup point was supposed to be. The whole thing's nuts. Yeah. It's, it, it's fast. I, I would love... To know what the hell happened. I think, yeah. like everyone, I'm fascinated by it. You can't throw it away. It's one of those ones you can't throw. I, I throw most of them away. Most of them, I, I, I love UFO stories because they're fun. Yeah. But most of them, like, could be There's anything. something shady going on. Could yeah. be anything. Could be people want attention. Could be military exercises. Could be mass delusion. Could be people just love to be special and have had some sort of an encounter, yeah. which they do. It gives them some sort of social credit. To have some sort of an encounter with a thing and they exaggerate and people love, love yeah. to exaggerate. I think Joe is leaving something really important out. The money that comes along with the attention. Yeah, I'd love to make this ingestible to science. That's sort yeah. of been my goal. Like, how can science take a hold of this? And, you know, when we do these experiments, I mean, I told you about this, this moon that I thought I found. And it turned out it was the instrument being crazy. Right, because yes. sometimes instruments do crazy sure, stuff that we don't understand. So the only way to figure that out is to get hold of the instrument, right? We need to get right. it in our labs and take that thing apart and test it and calibrate it, etc. And we don't have access to those military devices. It's all top secret, so we can't even do that experiment. But right. I can imagine thinking about how to do that. Um, one of the big numbers we don't know, even with the visual reports, is the false positive rate. So this is a key number in science. Whenever you do an experiment, you need to know how often does the experiment produce something that's spurious, the false positive rate. Now, in the U.S., there's about uh, 28,000 pilots across all military branches. David is actually lowballing this number. Estimates suggest around 30,000 to 50,000 active U.S. military pilots across all branches, with numbers fluctuating due to recruitment, retention, and operational needs. And they fly something like 200 hours per year on average. So that's 5.6 million hours in the air every year, in one year. Now, let's say a pilot, one in every 10,000 hours that they fly, they, they make a mistake. They misidentify a balloon for a UAP or whatever it is. One in 10,000. That's an incredibly low, by the way, error rate to have. But even then, you'd end up with 560 UAPs a year made that way, all spurious, all not real, just from human error. Isn't this the most logical way to look at these sightings? Props to David for bringing in a new perspective that hasn't really been said on JRE before. Um, so the only way, and that's actually pretty similar to Project Bluebook. Project Bluebook found about 742 per year was being reported. So, you know, I made that number up, one in 10,000, but we need to know what that number is. If, if it turns out there's an excess, like the error rate is 100,000, then that Project Bluebook Project Blue number is super interesting. And it would be in excess. And we'd say we've detected something. There's a real anomaly here that we have to look at. But the problem is we don't know what that number is. I mean, you'd have to somehow put these pilots in like simulators or something where you have complete control conditions for thousands of hours and somehow test how often do they make these mistakes. Also, the problem, Pro Project Blue Book was not an objective analysis of UFOs. They had a directive. And the directive was to discredit 
everything. Yeah. Project Blue Book ran from 1952 to 1969 and investigated 12,618 UFO sightings, often aiming to debunk sightings as natural phenomena or aircraft, fueling public skepticism and conspiracy theories about cover-ups. Yeah, but even even so, I'm just giving you sort of ballpark. I mean, the NASA UAP task force was similar kind of numbers. You're getting mm -hmm. like hundreds per year of these right. sorts of events, right? I don't think that's a crazy number to throw around. So the whole point is that whatever numbers you choose, you have to know the error rate of, right. of, of the experiment. And we could imagine making that legit and doing it. Um, there's actually an, one of the recommendations of the task force, the NASA UAP task force, was to develop an app on people's phones iPhones because they have you know magnometers on them, they have GPS, they have the camera, these high resolution images. So there's enough instrumentation on there, and it's all the same, and we understand that technology that you could you know have ten people video the same UFO, and you'd be able to triangulate the position, the mm. speed, um, get the distance to it. You'd get all that kind of information. Right. Um, and so there is actually, I think there's an app called Enigma you can now download that does this. So there's some independent apps which have been developed to do this. Really? Yeah. Uh, just about UAPs? Yeah, for UAP spotting. I wonder yeah. what they did with those in New Jersey when they were having all those stupid drone sightings. I, I actually, I chatted to one of the developers and they said, yeah, things were going crazy that week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what they was, said, it was what lighting was that up. all about? Like that Christmas. was so strange. In late 2024, mysterious drone sightings in New Jersey sparked widespread panic and conspiracy theories, with reports of large drones near airports and military sites. The White House later stated they were FAA authorized for research and hobbyist use, not threats, though vague explanations fueled ongoing public frustration and skepticism. That yeah. was so strange. That's one of those things where I feel like the government completely failed us in explaining to people what, yeah. like, is this some sort of top secret military thing? Is this another country? Is this some sort of a private business that wants to test how fantastic their drones are? Like, why? Yeah. Why is this happening? And why are you freaking everybody out? Like, what? It, it really sucks that we live in an age of drones and so many like Starlink satellites because if yeah. you see something in the sky now, it, your immediate reaction is that's probably you know a human controlled. Uh, vehicle. If you could go back to the 1940s and 1930s, yeah. Then, if you had UAP reports, then I think they'd be more convincing because there's there's no, there's no that's pre Sputnik, right? There right. shouldn't be anything in in orbit of the Earth at that point, right? So that would be more compelling. But of course, we can't rewind the tape, right? And all those stories, like the Kenneth Arnold incident. On June 24th, 1947, pilot Kenneth Arnold saw nine shiny objects near Mount Rainier moving at 1,700 miles per hour, coining flying saucer and sparking UFO fascination. And all these different ones are just these anecdotal tales of people saying. Saying they saw things in the sky and I you know I'm not saying they're liars but that's not enough yeah. I, I need something yeah I think the it, it depends what your goal is if your goal is to convince yourself that aliens are out there because you saw a UFO I think that's easy enough to do but most people in that world they want more than that they want me to believe it they want you to believe they want everyone to believe it to come along for the ride right, right? <laughs> yeah, 100%. It's like, it, this is so true definitely cult-like behavior it's like having a religious guy come yes. knock your door, like, join my church. Mm -hmm. that it's not enough for them to have the personal belief. It has to grow. And so um, if you really want to convince everyone, that's going to naturally include the skeptics, the doubters. It's going to include the scientists. It's got, if you want to bring everyone in with you, yeah. then the standard of evidence is going to be pretty damn good. It's got to be yeah. really strong. And we're just not there, right? It's, there's, too, there's too many ways out. So do you agree with David on this one? Would love to hear from you in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you in the next one.